What is up guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we are doing a brand new series as the United States of America. In the previous series, we played as President Donald Trump, and I actually had that series going on ever since 2017. Uh, that series was started because of the election of President Donald Trump, and this one is going to be a very drastically different series. I'm going to be leading the United States as President Joe Biden. Joe Biden has obviously been elected President of the United States uh, in the previous election on November 3rd of 2020. As of the recording of this video, the presidential election has not been certified. Uh, the certification of the United States uh, usually comes through the form of the Electoral College. So first order of business, let's go ahead and go through our itinerary. We have an itinerary to uh, fill out and our advisor Nick Bailey has told us that we need to create a government. It's your special duty to create a new government. Yes sir, we do need to create a government. Uh, if he can, uh, if he has the ability to create our cabinet for us, but I think if we can go in uh, I think it should be pretty easy for me to go through and pick out my uh, cabinet myself so let's go ahead and start off with the Treasury Department uh, if we go over to the Treasury Department then we can go through a list of our own party members and then we can start throwing some uh, recognizable people into into this uh, into the cabinet so then let's go ahead and go through this is the Treasury Secretary so I think let's look to see who we have we have Jay Johnson that is a uh, John Jackson but his uh, real life name is Jay Johnson this guy was actually the uh, head of Homeland Security during the Obama administration uh, if I can go through what about James Pierce what are you 44% current popularity he is 58 years old center left and formerly a citizen uh, maybe um, I think, yeah, James Pierce, let's go ahead and select you for Treasury Secretary, and it uh, reduces your popularity by about 1%, uh, but we don't need to worry about that. Employment and social, let's go ahead and go through and see who we can do, and I think I'm going to go ahead and skip through this, just so I'm not wasting too much time, and then I'll go through and show you guys who I put into my cabinet uh, after this. Finally back and I finally formed my own government so uh, the Joe Biden government has finally been formed let's go ahead and go through we need to see what kind of policies we need to enact in the future in future episodes and uh, see what our overall tax plan is going to be uh, for income tax I think uh, we are going to enact a progressive tax plan this is going to be the one opportunity that I finally am going to be able to do a different kind of tax plan uh, usually as a Republican administration I would uh, kind of like lax back on taxes as I really wouldn't touch uh, the income tax brackets at all uh, but since we are playing as a Democrat and I'm going to be enacting a little more more of a liberal policy um, I'm going to increase some of these taxes a little bit just to pay for some of the other things that I'm going to be enacting we'll be creating some other taxes we could do the tax on large digital companies we have the ability to do with to do that we would also enact some taxes on large fortunes we could actually switch over to a value added tax uh, that would be one of the biggest tax reforms that we would be able to enact uh, if we go to a value added tax then i think that could mean that we could lower some of these taxes uh, in the future but again uh, that is a possibility should i stay with the income tax or should i go to a value added tax system 
uh, if I go to a value added tax system, then these I will I will work to eliminate this tax bracket here. That is going to eliminate 1.4 trillion dollars from our economy, uh, but that will be the new income tax revenue that we would be able to get. Another thing that we are going to be using very very not real uh, liberally, I would say, uh, is going to be the tax on industrial pollution. We actually have the ability uh, as a Democrat again we're playing as a Democrat and I'm going to be enacting some democratic policies uh, in this gameplay uh, so we're gonna be liberally using the tax on industrial pollution uh, I think we could also work to increase the tax on a petroleum and energy products that could help us uh, move toward a green economy that's also going to be the other uh, goal of this uh, series we are going to be working toward a very much green US economy so if you look at our overall situation right here, the United States is obviously a federal republic. We have 334.9 million people inside of the United States. Our GDP right now is $19.5 trillion. Uh, and then we are a presidential regime center left. Uh, we are playing as a center, center left uh, candidate or not really candidate uh, president so we are going to be enacting things that would be center left but also we have the ability to kind of like i guess stretch our arms across the aisle it's going to be really hard for us to stretch our arms across the aisle uh, but we are going to try to work for it uh the, we have 22 almost 23 percent of the share of the world uh share of the world gdp our uh, growth rate right now is nearly two percent and then we have a 2.76 percent unemployment rate uh, our inflation rate right now is 1.78 percent uh national deficit is almost six percent about six uh five point six eight percent right now uh, we have a relatively strong currency it's a near nearly almost one euro it's still a little bit weaker than the euro but if uh, we could uh, try to increase our exports that's going to help us out in uh, getting our currency to become stronger our debt to gdp ratio right now is 102 percent our gdp per capita is almost sixty thousand dollars so if we can work to get that up by lowering some taxes then that will help us out but some of our taxes uh, even if we go after a progressive tax policy uh, that could also hurt our gdp per capita ratio in the future uh, co2 emissions right now are 5416 uh, or we have 1.4 million active duty troops we could actually work to reduce that but our chiefs of staff would not like that and at all and then with nuclear weapons we could also work toward nuclear disarmament we could uh, dismantle uh, 75 nuclear weapons right off the bat uh, so let's go ahead and go to the next day and then we have addition and then we have the government to be created already created my own government uh, we have a meeting request from the president or the foreign head of state uh, or yeah it looks like the president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo so should we do that I'm gonna go ahead and refuse that because we do not have I mean we have relatively good relations with the Democratic Republic of the Congo but it would not be popular for me to meet with them uh, right off the bat uh, what I could also do uh, we do not have some good relations with uh, Japan Japan is a uh, it is a conservative rightist regime right now. They're controlled by a conservative rightist government. And in turn, uh, if we were the opposite party, if we were the Republican Party, we would have very good relations with the nation of Japan right now. But unfortunately, uh, that now that we are a center-left regime, uh, obviously these rela this, these relations have been uh, strained because of that. We still have relatively good relations with the nation of Taiwan or the Republic of China. Uh, the People's Republic of China still hates us. Uh, we have very bad relations with the Republic of India right now. Uh, Iran still hates us, but we have very good relations with Iraq. Uh, who is going to be our first uh, national meeting? Let's go ahead and meet with the United Kingdom. Uh, relations with the United Kingdom seem to have normalized even after the uh, the regime change and we are in the year 2021 so we're just now starting off with uh, the democratic regime in the new election but speaking of uh, another meeting that we could do we actually have very good relations with the uh, United States of Mexico so if we could uh, schedule a meeting with our southern neighbor that will be another great meeting for us 
to um, to get some better economic relations with Mexico. This is actually going to be one of the best opportunities for us. And then we could actually ask for a couple of different things. Uh, before we have our meeting, let's go ahead and ask Mexico whether they would like for us to build an uh, international railway toward them. Uh, one of the biggest things that I'm going to embark on is going to be a large spending program that is going to expand the usage of high-speed rail in the United States. This is going to be a very expensive program, but if we do that, we can boost economic growth. Uh, one of the biggest challenges of the United States is that you do not have a lot of ways to get economic growth. Even if you want to make trade contracts with other countries, uh, one of the biggest things about that is that you are not, we're not able to uh, get fair prices. Uh, and one of the challenges of that is whenever you export stuff to something to somewhere like if I want to make a trade contract with France uh, that trade contract is not going to be that good because my prices are not going to be as high as my selling price there's got they're actually going to be lower than my selling price if I sell it to somewhere like France Japan or even the United Kingdom the United States has the highest uh, purchase price and a selling price and then so if you try to make a contract out of anywhere then you are not going to be able to do that that's why sometimes whenever you're playing as anyone but the United States then selling to the United States is going to be your best option because again they have the highest prices out of any other country and again one of the challenges of that is that you are not able to export that much stuff and the other thing is is that you are consuming most of the stuff in the world whenever it comes to things like automobile construction you're not able to export much of that because for one you're not making that much and then two you're so focused on your own national production and selling it to your own people that you don't have the time or the resources to be able to sell it to another country uh, but uh, one of the biggest things that we need to do right now, we need to go into the economy and figure something out because obviously our economy is stagnant. We don't have that much growth going toward us. Uh, our growth rate right now is 1.09%. It is going down uh, in terms of where it was just a couple of days ago and our stock market is reacting in turn. We uh, It was at 14,000 just about, about a day ago it looks like and now it is at 13,800. Uh, our GDP right now is uh, 19 trillion 400 billion and we are again 20 almost 23 percent of the world's GDP and it, that is trending downward uh, in terms of exports we are exporting 3.8 trillion dollars worth of product out of the United States but again as I, t as I said before we are importing we are the biggest importers out of any other country in the world I mean you can't even compare to any other countries the the, the, uh, the next biggest country that has the most imports foreign purchases and dollars annual volume uh, is Japan they import over 7.1 trillion dollars worth of product the next one after that is gonna be looks like is that Switzerland Switzerland is importing two trillion dollars worth of product every year Germany is importing three trillion dollars worth of product and the United Kingdom is importing one trillion dollars worth of product uh, in terms of exports China is the largest exporter out of any other country with 14 trillion dollars being exported out of the Chinese economy uh, India now exports 2.9 trillion the United Kingdom exports 1.8 trillion so they actually uh, the United Kingdom looks like they have a positive uh, trade balance and so that's really good on them uh, the nation nation of Japan exports only 976 uh, billion dollars worth of product and they import over seven trillion dollars worth of product so in turn we have a negative trade balance of 21.2 trillion dollars that is our that I mean that is just a suffering economy but it is not the most unhealthy thing I mean the United States is able to run on this and still be able to be the strongest economy in the world however our economy will be overtaken by China probably within the next five years in game all right let's go ahead and go over a couple of days and let's go to our first meeting with uh, Boris Johnson or Bruce Robson the, who is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom let's go ahead sure. and offer this man a coffee tell him Very that we kind. love his country this thought is very uh, I will inform our tourism minister and then uh, renegotiate a uh, military alliance. We're not going to do that yet. Let's go ahead and ask him to uh, make the same decision yes. at us it's as the uh, at the next uh, G7 meeting. 
and then let's see what we can do in terms of uh, contracts. I want to see if I can get one import contract coming in from the United Kingdom. Uh, if we could do that, it's probably going to help us out a little bit. Uh, building housing and roadway, we don't need to do that yet. Uh, copper. Uh, I think they're uh, the same in terms of, hang on, we could actually import some oil from them. That could help us out a little bit. Well, actually, they don't have that much oil, but they, I always thought they were pretty self-sufficient on oil, but I guess I was wrong on that. So I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting right now. So Mexico agrees to a potential partnership for the construction of a high-speed railway line. This country has signed a draft agreement, which opens the door to joint projects to construct high-speed train lines. Uh, we maintain good relationship with this country on an economic diplomatic level and we had no difficulty convincing them so i guess because of the previous administration the united uh, mexico is definitely up for grabs in terms of both trade as well as uh, uh, other types of projects that we could uh, build alongside each other uh, the previous administration was obviously very hard on mexico in terms of immigration so i guess this is a sign of relief and uh, potential future partnerships with mexico and the united States uh, because of this new administration. So that is awesome that we are able to get uh, that document signed. Let's go ahead and go to this meeting with the president of Mexico, sure. offer him a coffee, tell him there that we, we love go. his country, and then uh, let's go ahead and propose a military alliance. I'm going to go ahead and say that we're going to have a non-aggression pact with the United States of Mexico. Uh, let's try that one more time, and maybe third time's a charm, and I don't think, yep, that's not going to work. So let's go ahead and go to the trade with Mexico, and uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, cement. Can we get some cement from you guys? Uh, very, very small amount, large production or consumption uh, that we have of cement, and Mexico's most, yeah, Mexico's definitely not going to be able to cover that. Uh, chemicals can we do chemicals no we cannot uh, copper uh, do, 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 do. fuel maybe no uh, we can't do oil I know well actually we could do some oil uh, we need to expand the usage of oil so we can get our own oil from ourselves and be able to be self-reliant on ourselves uh, that would be somewhat contradictory to Joe Biden's plan to end oil but in terms of gameplay that's exactly what i need to do so that's like that's why i'm going to be doing this as biden we're going to be doing some policies as him but then other policies it's specifically for a gameplay purpose uh because i obviously need to grow my economy and to do that i need to expand certain things uh, such as oil production and that's going to be 20 billion dollars let me go ahead and call this this is going to be the san antonio we're going to call it the san antonio agreement and it's going to be an importation of oil from the United States of Mexico. And uh, we're going to do this for four years. It's going to be done in four years. So basically by the time, by the end of our first term, this uh, this uh, contract will be done. Uh, so let's go ahead and call this. Uh, we can actually accept this contract. So we're going to be getting it uh, for $678 per tow. And we're ordering $33.4 million tow worth of oil and that is going to cost the united states 22.6 billion dollars and that is going to be an acceptable contract for us is going to expire on january 13th 2025 just days before the end of our first term uh, so that's going to be great to get that done uh, thank you so much mexico for getting us a great uh, oil contract and that's going to definitely boost relations between the united states and mexico poverty let's address poverty real quick uh, let's go over to over to population and let's address poverty real quick we our gdp per capita has dropped by about 200 dollars and we have about uh looks like 12 percent about nearly 13 percent but 12.98 percent of the united states living in poverty so in order to do that let's go ahead and get a couple of things done in our first 100 days uh, let's go over to work let's go to legislation and then uh, let's automatically ask it's not increase the minimum wage yet but it's going to be on our list uh, minimum solidarity allowance and then let's go over no let's go over to housing real quick and rent increases and let's do a moratorium on rent increases and let's go ahead and throw this into a uh, a, a, a reform and it's going to be called the housing act of 2020 
and it's going to index link rent increases. Let's go ahead and create this reform, and uh, that will be for that. And then let's go ahead and say state aid for uh, purchase of property. We're going to go ahead and leave that at reduced rate loans. We're not going to do reduced uh, income tax uh, yet unless we absolutely need to. Uh, and, and establish a monthly rent allowance for low salaries. Let's go ahead and increase this by a little bit, a little bit, I say a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and increase this to about $300. Uh, we're going to get this to about maybe $500, and then I think uh, by the end of our first term, we're gonna go ahead and try to get this to up above $1,000. That is going to help reduce poverty by double or even triple what the current number is right now. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that. We're gonna propose that for $300. Republicans are going to be extremely against, against that. Uh, Republicans in the Senate do not like it, but we get 57% of the approval in the United States Senate. So we are going to go ahead and propose this uh, right now. And we're gonna attach it to the Housing, Housing Reform Act. 2020 i say reform but it's called the housing act of 2020 let's go ahead and add it add that to the reform and see how this passes it has a 64 percent chance of, ch of passing the house of representatives and a slimmer margin 60.1 percent of passing the united states senate but we still get it passed and i think that's going to be it for what we're going to do for housing and in terms of uh construction of public housing we have 1.5 million debilitated housing units in the United States that are pub that are owned by the public government. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to go ahead and reform uh, that as well. We're going to use, we're going to have a very strict and uh, aggressive housing policy that we're going to go uh, for a few things. We're going to get this down to about less than 1 million. That's going to be relatively easy for me to do because these things don't take that long to uh, rehabilitate and then uh, I mean it takes just a portion of your manpower but the United States has a huge supply of manpower that we can use to enact on po uh, enact and embark on projects such as this so one of the biggest things that I'm gonna do right now we're gonna go ahead and rehabilitate 250,000 uh, housing housing units it's gonna take 2.5 million uh, public worker employees from the United States right now. Again, it's going to take less than a month to do. It's going to cost us $8.7 billion annually, but then almost $50 billion over the next five years. That reduces it to 1.3 million uh, debilitated housing units in the United States. And in turn, let's also call for about 400,000 uh, housing units can can we do 400,000 gonna go ahead and let this housing reform pass and then we are going to go to health and social security we're gonna re we're gonna increase our health health worker pay and then we're also gonna call for an additional about look uh, looks like uh, two, 327,000 medical staff right now, and then we're going to increase that to 350,000. So we're going to go ahead and confirm that. That's going to cost about $2 billion. Again, this is going to be, uh, we're going to go ahead and play this real quick too. Uh, fight cancer, San Antonio agreement has well been done. accepted by the uh, United sure States and Mexico. Let's fight cancer. So let's go ahead and increase cancer research uh, as, uh, if you actually don't know this, Joe Biden actually did lose his son to cancer. I think it was cancer. I don't know. I, I believe it was. Yes, it was cancer. So we're going to go ahead and give that uh, two additional stars. It's going to be an additional $3.5 billion into our national expenditure. Uh, we are spending $941 billion into health and social security right now. Let's go ahead and increase our funding for cancer. So that's a very relatable topic. Uh, thank you for you have showed great determination in reducing inequality and social justice. Thanks to you, the most fragile people have found hope and pride in themselves. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you so much for saying that. Founding Undeniable. values, uh, undeniably, you have the founding values of society, which is love for family and respect. She probably won't like my policies that I'm going to be enacting uh, because usually she likes conservative policies. Uh, the housing, the National Family Association in this game. Uh, usually likes more uh, conservative policies in terms of whenever it comes to family. They don't like a uh, gay marriage. They don't like it whenever you give the uh, give gay people the opportunity to adopt uh, children, which we are going to be doing that. We're, uh, gay marriage is already legal in the United States, but we do have the opportunity to... Uh, let's go over here. Do we have that option? No, it is going to be in family. 
Uh, we are going to legalize same-sex parent adoption. I'm going to do this after my first 100 days, and that's going to be on uh, February, or not February, it is uh, April 12th. I think it's April 12th, which is the 100th day of the new presidency. Uh, so again, legislation on homosexual rights, that is already a marriage. So we do not have to mess with that. We don't even have to get it through Congress. We don't have to propose a referendum to it, even though the United States does not have the ability to do referendums. Uh, determine uh, legislation on abortion. It's already legal on demand. We don't have to mess with that anymore. Uh, and then legalize same-sex parent adoption. We do have the opportunity to do that. But again, we're going to wait until after our first 100 days to do that. Uh, one of the biggest things about taxes right now is that we have a very concerned conservative tax plan right now uh, but uh, things like company taxes those are going to be going up uh, the tax on petroleum and energy products those are going to be going up uh, we're going to try to get that to about 10 cents and again progressive tax policy it's going to suck in terms of how you've kind of seen me play uh, before and it's going to be a little bit different but since we are a liberal we are going to expand the usage of certain taxes so again we're going to be creating a lot of these taxes uh we're going to be doing the gaffa tax we're maybe going to be turning toward a carbon tax uh i don't think i'm going to touch highway tolls because those are really hard to do uh financial transact no i actually don't have to do financial transaction taxes but i could do taxes on redundant redundancies uh actually i could probably you know what um i think i've been recording for long enough this is about a 40 minute episode uh, as of right now, but it's probably going to be cut down a little bit more. Uh, last things to do, since we are now a pro-education president, uh, we're more about centralized education. So uh, if you actually don't know, uh, the wife of Joe Biden was actually a former teacher. Uh, so that's actually really interesting. So again, first hundred days that we're going to be doing right now, uh, we need to go ahead and go through. And we're going to be seeing the uh, effects of our policies uh, over the next two months um, and then we have other weekend meetings sure offer a coffee champagne <laughs> blah 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 uh, speak highly me in public do, 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 do. Yes. and that wasn't sure that we just need these guys to I guess huh. like me for right now uh, speak highly me in public and the meeting right there and then aids and grants let's go ahead and give you about two more stars and then teaching of local languages give you some more and then education policy on gender equality that's going to be another priority for this administration uh, classes for the exceptionally gifted that's uh, going to be another priority backup classes let's give you two more uh, stars for that supervision and guidance one more star literacy aids one more star and then teacher training let's give one more additional star that's going to be an additional a cost of 3.5 billion dollars and that increases our deficit to 5.71 percent all right we got two more messages right here we have a uh, beneficial popularity thing from our attorney general so thank you so much uh, Mr. President, undeniable that your popularity is a measure of the actions of our government, so that is awesome that people are taking... Uh, Housing Reform Act of 2020 has been passed, so let's go over to... Uh, not work, we're gonna go to housing, and let's see. Uh, we do have uh, a little bit less homeless people, about, about looks like about a difference of 200. Uh, homeless people have been taken off the street. Uh, then we have urbanization is going up. Uh, unhealthy housing has been going down, so that is great to see that those immediate effects. See, it's already done. It uh, does not take that long to uh, get rid of all of those housing units. So let's go back and let's do another 300,000. That's going to be an additional $10 billion we're going to be borrowing from our coffers, even though we don't have any coffers. It's literally just us borrowing money. Uh, that's essentially what it's like playing as the United States. It's a lot of borrowing. It's a lot of this, a lot of that. A new generation of RFID chips. Uh, let's go ahead and pause this. We are not the first, but we can profit a lot from this technology since our manufacturing process is uh, very specific. Uh, microchips, a new generation of microprocessor with the RFID of radio identification. This new technology allows passive objects uh, equipped with these uh, chips to have an active behavior 
and to act through a network connection of an under RFID, uh, no matter if it is another device or under a person's skin. Again, we're not the first, but we can profit a lot. We're going to go ahead and hold off on that for right now, but we could patent it in the future. Uh, we have a meeting request from the Prime Minister of Spain. This is going to be our last meeting before we end this episode today. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of these episodes uh, over the next couple of days, and we're going to be working on the economic tutorial. So again, wait for that economic tutorial to come out. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, to do, and I cannot wait to release it to you guys. Uh, a few things to do before we go. Uh, United Nations, let's go ahead and publicly support the organization since we are now back on the international scene. Uh, IMF, let's go ahead and publicly support the organization. World Bank, publicly support the organization. And WHO, we are going to publicly support the organization as well. Uh, so that's going to be uh, one of the biggest things. We're uh, back on, the, again, we are back on the international scene. Uh, Albuquerque terrorists. That is one other thing. Before we go, we need to go over to terrorists, go to Jihadist Caliphate, and then let's place everyone under surveillance. This is going to be another thing that we're going to do. Very hard line on terrorism. We need to fight terrorism with every way that we possibly can. Let's go ahead and expand agent training and then expand the fight on terrorism. It's going to be $40 billion. Can we cover that? $4.4 trillion is how much we are spending, and that is going to be $4.49 trillion if we do the 40 additional billion dollars uh, into our secret services. Uh, let's go ahead and cut one star from each. $22 billion, I can go ahead and do that. And it's going to expand our deficit to 5.9% uh, as of right now. Let's go ahead and then expand our agents on the national territory to 50,000. And special international agents, put that at 500. And then cyber analysts, let's go ahead and put you at 10,000. And then in terms of trying to pay for all of these actions, let's go ahead and go over here. And let's go ahead and expand the company tax. It's going to be one of my first immediate actions. Let's go ahead and see if we can shoot for about 25%. Uh, what is going to be the uh, reaction in terms of that? People do like that. People will like that. The companies will not like that, but it will have a chance to pass the Senate. Uh, the, so that's all we really need to worry about. As long as we are able to pass the Senate, uh, we we're our administration and our uh, policies are going to be fine. So let's go ahead and put the company tax at 25%. That's going to fetch us about an additional $72 billion worth of money uh, toward the national government. So that's going to be awesome for us. Uh, that reduces our deficit to 5.52%. And then in terms of industrial pollution tax, can we get this past Congress? No, we cannot. Uh, so we need to do this in increments. We need to do that 0.3%. Can we do that? Can we get it past the Senate? We cannot. So let's do 0.2%. It's going to fetch us another $9 billion, and that has the chance to pass the Senate. So it's going to go ahead and throw that into the into Congress, and that will help us out. Once we actually get that up to a satisfactory number, then we will be able to pay off a lot of our debt in terms of that. So thank you so much, Eversim, for giving Good us morning. that option. But let's see, inflation is now 1.73%, uh, and our uh, interest rate is 0.25. So we're gonna leave that right, right there for right now. Uh, one of the biggest things that I need to pay attention to right now, we need to pay attention to unemployment. Unemployment, I think, might be set to go up to at least 10%. I've had this happen to me before, so if that is going to be the issue of this administration, then we are going to uh, hold on to it and we're going to stay on top of that. Uh, to make sure that not too many people get unemployed and then whenever people do get unemployed, we're going to be on top of the situation. So we're going to be expanding unemployment benefits uh, and then we are also going to expand help for or employing young people as well as seniors. It's going to cost us an additional $6 billion. Guys, if you guys like this, this first episode of the Joe Biden presidency of the United States, 
uh, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to see more content like this, just hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any more episodes of the United States whenever they are released. I am returning back to Power and Revolution content, so if you do like this Power and Revolution content, do uh, hit that bell notification icon, hit the subscription button if you do like this channel, and then also hit the like button so you can help me out on the algorithm. So again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Guys, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and take care.